Okay, so I've been conflicted between the base model M1 Pro MacBook Pro and the base model Mac Studio, and nobody on the internet seems to be giving a straight answer. I must have watched hundreds, I kid you not, hundreds of videos on this topic, and I finally uh, made a video. I was so conflicted that I actually bought both of those models, both of those Macs, and I made a video on why I ultimately chose the Mac Studio over the MacBook Pro. But this is not that video, and that video will probably never see the light of day because right there you have the 14-inch base model MacBook Pro, which is what I have now chosen, and I've made up my mind at this point, as my companion to this, the M1 iPad Pro. In fact, this iPad Pro is probably the companion to the MacBook Pro at this point. So I have a production studio. I have a production company. And I'm dealing with multiple codecs, multiple resolutions, quick turnaround time, heavy effects, heavy processing, heavy LUTs, heavy texts and titles and stuff like that all the time. Now, I am a, a, a gear junkie, right? I want the most horsepower I can get, the most bang for the buck all the time. And that's why it something doesn't sit right with paying $2,000 and getting 14 core a GPU when you could have 24 core. Getting an eight core CPU when you could have a 10 core. Getting an M1 Pro when you could have an M1 Max, right? They both have uh, uh, 512 gigs of storage, but getting 16 gigs of RAM when you could have 32. See, this was the conflict that I had internally, the struggle. And the question really came down to, how much headroom do you actually need? Let me tell you some hard truth. The Mac Mini M1 is such a beast of a machine that most people will probably never need to upgrade to that until 8K production is widespread. That thing, which is right here under this book, can handle four streams of 4K, 10 bit, 60 frames at once, no sweat, right? So when it came to me, I was like, I wasn't even pushing the Mac, the Mac Mini really to its breaking point on a daily, right? It was very rare. Uh, I would have to have multiple applications open. I was working on a crazy deadline. I just had to keep pushing. It was a late night burning the midnight oil. That's when, you know, with multiple projects, I started to see some slowdown. But on the day-to-day, 98% of the time, I would say this thing worked without a single flaw. Um, and it wasn't even that this could ever not do what I asked it to do. It was just a little bit slower and you could tell some performance issues. So then you have the M1 Pro, which is multitudes faster than the M1. So when you're dealing with that, you look at the Mac Studio base model and what it truly is, and I've been on the phone with Apple about this too. The Mac Studio, even the base model, is made for an 8K production world. You see, content is usually here and the hardware has to catch up constantly. Has to catch up because it keeps getting better. What the M series processors have done, uh, particularly the M1 Pro and up, M1 Pro to M1 Ultra, they have leapfrogged content where content is right now for the average user, okay? Now I'm not talking about, obviously, if you're in a movie studio and you're doing that kind of thing, then yeah, you probably need Mac Studios or if you have a render farm and you're doing a lot of 3D, I don't know why you'd be using Mac for a render farm anyway, but maybe you are, that would be a different conversation. Um, but for 99.9% .9 of people right now in any kind of creative industry, the Mac Studio and M1 Max machines in general are overkill. And this is not just for video, although video production is what this video is primarily focused on. Uh, this is music production. You're getting over 100 tracks on the M1 Pro. You're getting plenty of tracks, over 50, 60 tracks on the M1. Uh, the M1 Max is pulling 150, and then you're getting into ludicrous numbers with the Ultra, right? The, yeah, that's headroom, right? So you're gonna have space for years and years to come. Uh, you won't start to really use those things until you're in a widespread 8K world. And I don't see that happening anytime soon. I don't plan on upgrading even to 6K for another 12 months, right? So in the 4K world, if M1 has it, M1 Pro certainly has it in the bag. And so that's why I ultimately went with this. And I talked to Apple and they were like, okay, well, they basically reiterated that sentiment that I just said. 
and they said, do you need mobility? I said, not really. You know, most of the time I'm out on a shoot um, doing either social media or short films, music videos, weddings, blah, blah, blah. And delivery isn't required right there on the spot. So I always take the footage on SSDs back home. I'm shooting on the Zcam E2 M4, which is not a point and shoot. It's not, this is an actual box style cinema camera. So this is high end work. And uh, I take it home and I edit it at the home studio. Uh, because honestly, the audio is just trash on all these machines. They're good for laptop speakers. Headphones are good for headphones. But when you're doing a certain level of work, you need, uh, shout out to Cali Audio, you need some serious uh, speakers to get really good audio quality. So I bring it back home and that's where I edit it and that's where it's delivered from. So if I'm living in that world, it's very rare that I'm ever traveling. But as business is going well and clients expand and perhaps shooting locations expand, um, there is the possibility that I could be out there shooting on a gig where I need to deliver that weekend or I need to get some posts from that night up, maybe that night or by the next morning. It irks my soul to even think about packing up a Mac Studio or even a Mac Mini, putting it in a backpack. It would have been bad enough if that were just it, but to have to find or take a monitor with you, and I'm not playing with this, this 12 inch iPad Pro, it's not gonna cut it, you can't do, I mean, you can do video editing, but if you're doing a production where you're out and about, plus these desktops don't even boot straight to an iPad. You have to have another display and then connect and turn on and activate uh, these iPad displays, these tethered displays. So as of the recording of this video, I have had the base model 14 inch for about a day, <laughs> but already I've shot 4K video, including this video, which will be edited on this MacBook Pro here. Um, and this is actually in ProRes 422HQ, Rec 709. And uh, well, if I have serious performance issues with this, then you'll probably never see this video either. <laughs> and I'll post the one about the Mac Studio. Oh, goodness gracious. Hopefully you see this video. You don't need the Mac Studio. You're never going to need that until uh, we're in an 8K production world. Um, I'm even using this 14 for 6K. I'm planning for that to be future-proofed enough where I can move to 6K and even 8K for single stream. But once you get to multi-streams of 8K, you're gonna run into issues. So, uh, but that's with the Mac Studio as well in an 8K world. So, I digress. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video, this was more of a subdued, chill, just talk style video. If you like this style of video, long form, just me talking, um, let me know with a comment down below or leave a like on the video. Do both. Why not? Subscribe, click the bell. I also have a video about why I chose this, this Zcam E2 M4 over the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera, something I never ever thought that I would do, but I have a reason for it. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, as we cover all things Apple Talk, iPad Pro, and audio and video, I'm Chris Grant Jr. It's the Granny Geek Show.